afternoon. Uh, my name is Mujaji and I'll be actually taking you on a very different route from what everybody's been talking about. When everybody sees the big sharks and everything, I, oh, I, I look at the big sharks but then I, I get wowed at the little guys that are hanging on to the sharks. <laughs> so, <laughs> and I'll be uh, doing Sipanostomatoid diversity on mobilities of the Kwazulu Natal coast. And this was part of uh, my MSc, which I was able to finish, thank goodness. I'm graduating on the 24th of May, so hallelujah. <laughs> okay, um, we all know that uh, in order to be able to conserve our marine biodiversity, it's very essential to understand the biology, the systematics, and the behavior of the marine biota. And there's very little knowledge, especially in South Africa, about the diversity and distribution of marine invertebrates, especially the copepods that are symbiotic with different hosts, ranging from invertebrates to marine mammals. And some of the, 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 most, uh, the most symbiotic copepods, we find them in the order Siphonostomatoide. There's actually six orders, so most of them we find in the order Siphonostomatoide. In this order, we have 39 known families of copepods, and in those 39 known families, we have found out that 22 okay in symbiosis with invertebrates, while 17 okay in symbiosis with vertebrates. And 11 out of those 17 have been reported from Elasmo Browns. Uh, this is just, uh, uh, sorry, this is just to show you uh, all the different shapes and sizes of all the symbiotic copepods that we actually run into. Some of you might have actually seen them on the shots that you've worked on. South Africa is very rich in marine biodiversity, and it has about 210 contributing species, <coughs> and a small percentage, a very small per percentage of those are mobility rays. These rays are widely distributed in warm, temperate, uh, and tropical areas across the world's oceans, so we find them almost everywhere. They are characterized by large pectoral fins, um, slender with black tail, uh, a slender with black tail and elongated snout or rostral fin on each side of the, of the head. That's the name devil rays. So they look like the devil in a way. Uh, there's actually 11 known species at the moment in the whole world and only seven have been reported from South African waters. And uh, in those seven we have uh, uh, we have the two that belong to the genus Manta. We have the giant Manta, Manta Barostris, and we have the reef Manta, uh, Manta Alfredi. Those are the ones that have been reported from South Africa. And the remaining five fall under the genus Mobila, which we find uh, the Longhorn Devil Ray, Mobila Erogondu Tenki, Mobila Thestoni, Mobila Japanica, Mobila Kuwila, and Mobila. <coughs> okay. Uh, what we know is the biology of mobilids has uh, it remains poorly known because of the difficulty to correctly identify the species in the field. Sometimes when you see them in all a bunch, it's very difficult to actually distinguish between the different species. So it's very difficult, and they're very uncommon. They're really seen and caught, and thus they're not very well studied. So if anybody's interested, they can actually just take up this devil race to study. Uh, in South Africa, uh, copy posts that have been reported from mobility rays include four species distributed in four families. So in, in one family we have, in the family Eudactylinida, we have Eudactylina oliviri that's been reported. And in Caligida, we have Caligus elongatus. Both of these have been reported from the short horn devil ray, Mobila Kuila. And then we have two more species that have been reported from Manta Biorostris. So we have Antiferus laminipes here, and then we have Anthosoma grassum. Okay, uh, usually it's very hard for us to actually convince people to understand what it is that we're trying to do because where we come from, there's not even a a shark nearby. So when we tell people that we're actually doing parasites of sharks, they don't actually get it. Why? I mean, what's the point? Why do you do them anyway? And then we actually get a very 
interesting question, do you eat them? <laughs> so, well, I don't know if anybody has eaten them, but there have been reports of people making soup from them, so I don't know. I've never had any, any coffee pot soup, so I don't know. But the truth is, there's very little knowledge about the biodiversity of invertebrates and distribution and parasitic invertebrates in South Africa. That's a known fact. And when we look at coffee pots, compared to the 2,800 species reported worldwide, less than 10% have been reported from South Africa. And that's only usually due to the fact that there's only one qualified coffee podologist working on symbiotic stomatoids from Elasmo Browns in South Africa. There's only one person working on that who's qualified. And right now I make half of the uh, <laughs> <laughs> qualified. So at, least now there's, at least now there's one and a half qualified people working on it. So that's a lot of something. And in, in that way, marine symbiotic coffee pods represent an unexploited opportunity for researchers in marine biodiversity and especially coffee podology in South Africa. So we do need more people, if you're interested. Okay, the main aim of this study was to investigate the siphonostomatoids we find on mobility rays, uh, to examine those mobility rays for the presence of those siphonostomatoids and to identify each of those siphonostomatoids by <laughs> comparing them with previously described species by dissecting and drawing specimens where it's very difficult to actually identify them, so we do the drawings. And furthermore, we describe and the dissected specimens and elaborate on ill-described features. The thing with copy pots is most of them have been done like a long time ago. We have a genus of uh, copy pots where the most recent literature is 1967. So that's like, so, there's a, a, a lot of elaborating on ill-described features because some of them are just, I mean, they've done, been done in the old days, so it's not very easy to understand them. Okay, we were able to collect 40 mobility rays, uh, of which 31 of them were mobila quila, uh, two of them were mobila ergo duitenki, and seven of them were manta alfreda. Okay, so this is what we do. When we get the hosts, the different types of hosts, we immediately examine them on the outside to, to find which uh, coffee pots have been attached on the outside. And then we cut out the gills and page through them through the filaments like we page through a book. So we just go each filament because they actually embed themselves in between the filaments. So we just page through those filaments. And after that, the coffee pots are fixed and preserved in 70% ethanol and we view them under the microscope to try and identify them and if we cannot identify them that's where we make all the drawings and try to, to see if we can identify them better. Okay this is what we found. We found that more than 90% of all the examined hosts were infected with different types of symbiotic stomatoids, and from that, we were able to identify 13 different species distributed over five families. Uh, in the first family, Kalijide, we were able to get seven species. Uh, in Yudatinide, we were able to get three species, Kroyeride, Tichelesside, and Pandaride. We were only able to get a single species from each of those uh, families. Okay, just to start with the family Kalijide. In this family, we found uh, Kaligas. Sorry, Caligus chrysophrysi. This species has only been reported from the yellow sea bream Raptosarcus sarva, which was caught off Kerala in India. So this marks the first record of this species on an Anasmo brown. And we found we were able to collect this from uh, uh, Movila quila and Manta alfreda. So this is the first uh, record of the, this species on an Anasmo brown. And then the second uh, genus that we were able to identify is Cupulina. Now this is uh, the three species that are known within this genus. So we know that there's Cupulina flores, Cupulina minor, Cupulina brevicoda. These were the species that are known and we found that these species are actually specific on mobility rays. So they've never been reported on any other uh, species of shark or ray or whatever. And 
these two are quite uh, distributed within the mobila genus, while this one has only ever been reported from a manta species. Okay. And these were the ones that we were able to collect. We collected three species, uh, and we were able to identify and describe two new species, of which the paper was only published actually yesterday. So, <laughs> so it's safe to actually talk about them now. <laughs> okay, uh, <laughs> one of them was Pipilina clifi, and the other one was Pipilina merira. This other one, we were able to see that it is a Pipilina species, but we only had like one specimen from a, from a host. So it's not really, we're not really convinced yet, and we can't really say it's a new species or whatever. So we're still trying to find more samples on these ones. And we collected them from Mobila Quila and Mobila Ergo Dukenki. So if you ever find any parasites on Mobila Quila and the other one, that would be very much great. And then we were able to find three more species that we were also unable to identify because of the small sample size. And the interesting thing about these ones are they, they do look like people in a species that we've identified, but we also found that they're actually very different. So if we find more samples, then we'll be able to actually conclude on what actually they are. And then in the next family, we were able to identify one, two, three species. This one has been reported from South Africa before. And these two, uh, Eudoxina, Diablophila, and Nemesis, have, uh, this is the first time that they're actually being reported from South Africa. And this one is Nemesis. Nemesis has only been reported from Dasiatus, the what is it, the, the diamond rays? Dasiatus? Yeah, well, yeah, the, the string rays, yeah, those ones. Yeah, so this is the only species that has been reported from other rays as well, but first time ever on a mobility ray. And then in the family Groyeri day, we were able to identify Groyerina mobile. Unfortunately, I couldn't find a picture of this one. It's, very, it's, it's a very small little copy pot, so it's very hard to get a picture of it. Uh, they are also specific to mobile rays, and what's interesting about them is that they don't, the other ones infect the gills and the body surface and everything. This ones infect the nasal lamelle, just uh, to show you where they just embed themselves in there. They're very small, and we found them infecting mob uh, mobile aquila. Okay, the last two families, we have the family Bandaridae, where we get uh, Metaferous laminipus, and we have the family Dechalesidae, where we have Anthosoma grassum. Anthosoma grassum is not really restricted to any particular shark species. We, we find them everywhere. So we've been, we, put, we collected them from great white sharks, we collected from all the other sharks as well, as well as mobility rays. Well, this one has only been reported for mobility rates. So all of them are quite specific except for anthosoma grassum. Okay, our, back in the day, mobility rates were not carefully studied for copypod infection, and the copypods that were reported from them were probably found by accident. So they were not very well studied back in the day. And imagine now we have been able to identify at least 13 species distributed over five families from only looking at three of the seven that are okay in South Africa. Now imagine if we were able to look at all of them, how, how the number would just go up. Uh, like I said, this is the first record of 10 of the species that we were able to identify. So 10 out of 30 were first records ever from South Africa, and some of them were first records from the, whole, the entire world, actually, in a way. Uh, South Africa, like I said, it's very rich in aquatic species, um, with, ten, with about 210 contributing species. All of them are probably infected with a large diversity of coffee pots. And I'm pretty sure that almost all of you who have worked on sharks have seen all these coffee pots before. So almost all of them have the ability to be infected by rays. The, on, in the, the only shark species that we've worked on and we didn't actually find anything over the past three years is the angel shark. So that one, that's the only one that we've worked on and we haven't found anything. So by studying the distribution and diversity of symbiotic copepods and mobilids in South African waters, we, we make a small but significant contribution towards the knowledge of symbiotic copepods in general and the biodiversity of the marine invertebrates in South African waters. 
Okay, just to thank a few uh, of the people, I don't think this project would have taken off if it wasn't for Pazulu Natal Shark Sport. I mean, this, that's exactly where we get our samples and everything. Um, Marine Megafauna, Dr. Andrea Marshall, I mean, she helped us with, uh, what is it, the identification of the, the manta rays, because usually we always thought that manta pyrosis was the only one that occurred in the Indian Ocean, so she was helpful in that way. And also marine dynamics, also oceans research. I mean, they invited us here to for a whole month to actually get samples from them, so which is also good. Thank you very much, and thank you. <laughs>